seventh video. Yep, check. You good. At, at seven thirty-four, the April eighth special meeting of the Long Hill Township Planning Board is called to order. We all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, I yeah. didn't read the stuff. Hold on. Doing, doing a little out of order. Hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> okay. well, I mean, we'll do that later. Let's do this. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God, God liberty and, and justice for all. Okay. okay, now you can sit down and Deborah will read the notices. <laughs> okay. Call the order and statement of compliance. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by posting a copy of the public meeting dates on the municipal bulletin board and website, by sending a copy to the Echo Sentinel newspaper, and by filing a copy with the municipal clerk. Standard board procedures. Any hearing conducted by the board is a quasi-judicial proceeding. Any questions or comments must be limited to issues that are relevant to what the board may legally consider in reaching a decision and decorum appropriate to a judicial hearing must be maintained at all times. Meeting cutoff. Announcement is made that as a matter of procedure, it is the intention of the planning board not to continue any matter past 10.30 p.m. at any regular or special meeting of the board unless a motion is passed by the members then present to extend the meeting to a later specified cutoff time. Shall I take the roll? Please. Take Deputy it anywhere Mayor you Ray. want. Present. Committeeman Verleza is excused this evening. Member Teresa Dill is excused this morning, uh, this evening. Uh, Mr. Hands. Here. Mr. Malinowski. Here. Mr. File. Here. Mr. Richardson. Here. Vice Chairman Jones. Present. And Chairman Sandow. Here. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. Tonight's meeting, as was explained in the uh, footnote to the agenda uh, is a session solely to discuss the uh, execution, the process for executing the master plan. It's a board discussion. There will be no public comments. The uh, contractor topology will make a presentation and with the board members will ask questions and uh, somewhere in the middle of the meeting, we will adjourn to an executive session to discuss the terms of contract renewal. Uh, just for the record, there are four people sitting in the audience and um, we know who you are. At this point, unless any member of the board has any other comment to add, I will turn the meeting over to Topology to make their presentation. Great. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if it's all right, I'd like to um, share some slides. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, Okay, everybody can see my screen? Yes. Yes, okay, great. Um, well, first of all, thank you all for your time this evening. Uh, um, my name is Phil Abramson. I'm the founder and uh, CEO of Topology uh, Planning Firm. Um, I just wanted to thank you for, for accommodating us. I know um, we had hoped to be on your regularly scheduled uh, meeting um, and I actually had a conflict and I do, again, appreciate you making arrangements um, to hear us on this important matter. So um, I just uh, basically what we're going to talk about is um, a little bit of an introduction about master plans. And I wish I had like a fast forward button on me because I don't know uh, what everybody knows and what everybody doesn't know. So I'm kind of going to give a little bit of a primer on master plans and I'll rely on, on you all to tell me. All right, let's let's skip the track, Phil, uh, and we'll and we'll move on to uh, and we'll move on to something more pertinent for you. Uh, and then. We're gonna give a little bit of update on the master plan, where it stands, um, and what we see as um, an, a way to uh, move this ahead through to completion. 
Um, so just a little bit about us for those. Uh, this is the first time I'm in front of you personally, and um, I haven't I haven't met uh, really maybe only David uh, in person. Um, and this was still many years ago, but um, so we're, we're a New Jersey based planning firm. I'm a, a New Jersey native, Morris County native personally. Um, and uh, we've had, we've done master plans uh, in, or re-examinations in places like Caldwell, South Orange, Marstown, and Summit. Um, also the, uh, my former employer, the city of Newark. Um, and we were retained, uh, I guess a couple of years ago now by the township, uh, really to collaborate with you as the planning board to prepare uh, this master plan. Um, our prior work uh, in Long Hill, we did we did work uh, on, on I guess at the uh, on behalf of uh, Morris County uh, EDC, um, and there were some visioning sessions going on. That's how we sort of got got to know you uh, as a community, as a municipality, um, and that was sort of the the genesis of the relationship. Um, and just kind of as a perspective of like how we uh, would approach this uh, this type of project um, as planners, as professionals that uh, yes, we're here to facilitate. Yes, we're here as the subject matter experts in um, planning and comprehensive planning, land use planning. Um, but you, you all are the experts in Long Hill Township and you all are the experts in its aspirations and its concerns um, and really in, in what it should be for the future. So um, we're not here to, to provide that type of substance. Um, we're here to, uh, to provide a framework and a strategy to help you get there. Um, based on what we know. Um, so what, what is a master plan and what is a New Jersey master plan? Um, just like you, the master plan, just like you as a board, uh, the master plan is a creature of the New Jersey municipal land use law. That's the enabling statute uh, for all land use regulation in New Jersey. And it is adopted by the planning board, uh, not by the town council, not by the um, zoning board. It is purely a planning board activity. Uh, and, you know, to take some quotes, uh, pertinent quotes from the um, land use law, it's a blueprint that depicts uh, current land uses and guides decisions for both growth and conservation. Uh, it guides the use of land throughout the municipality uh, in order to protect the health um, and safety and to promote general welfare. Uh, the master plan, generally speaking, serves as a tool to prioritize municipal improvements, to steer private investment, to align the various levels of government, meaning state, county, local levels, um, and to optimize. And, uh, and, I, and I use that word uh, precisely, rateables uh, and more, not to maximize rateables, um, but to optimize them in line with um, kind of what, what the larger goals are for the municipality. So what must a master plan contain uh, under the statute? Um, so the mandatory elements <clears throat> now are a statement of objectives and a land use element. The uh, a housing element technically is optional, but a fair share plan, not under the municipal land use law, but under the Fair Housing Act is a requirement. And recently, as in the past couple months, uh, the state uh, went ahead and enacted an amendment to the MLUL that requires a resiliency plan. Um, in municipalities like yours, where we're in the middle of a planning exercise, um, we are finishing the plan and resolving amongst ourselves that we will do an additional an additional element to resolve that at a later date. But um, personally, I feel that it's important to complete things that you start um, and that, uh, so, you know, we're not sort of going back in the communities that we're working in right now on master plans and restarting that effort to, to do this resiliency um, plan, particularly because um, it also relied on NJDEP guidance um, that has not been released yet. So um, that's, that's sort of our recommendation on the matter. Uh, optional master plan elements, and this is according to the MLUO, uh, things like the circulation element, utilities, recreation, conservation, economic, uh, economic development, recycling, transfer of development right plans, public access, green buildings, educational facilities, all that, all that sort of stuff. Uh, municipalities are um, uh, encouraged to uh, enact these type of plans uh, when they're when they're appropriate, when it when the planning board determines that they're appropriate, um, and that they're enabled uh, to do that under the MLUL. Um, if anybody wanted to kind of dig a little deeper, um, we did forward the four pages of the MLUL that relate to the master plan uh, to the board, and that's um, 
that's the the kind of black and white aspect of the statue for anybody who wants to take the time to educate themselves. Um, so what uh, what doesn't a master plan do? Uh, the master plan is not law; it is policy. Um, it does not directly change any ordinances. It does not change the zoning. It might make recommendations, but only the council, the, the duly elected governing body, uh, can do that. Um, it uh, it can make specific, it does not make specific recommendations um, beyond general use classifications. For example, uh, you know, forgive me for like naming a certain brand here, but like to say retail is one thing, to say Wawa or to say, uh, you know, King Supermarket versus another supermarket is, is something else. Um, so we can, uh, you know, it doesn't get into that level of detail. It does not designate redevelopment or rehabilitation areas. Sorry for the typo, we wrote that twice. Um, but uh, it could recommend where the redevelopment powers uh, would best be used. And it does not define municipal budgets. That said, um, the, a component that could follow from a master plan is what they call under the municipal land use law, a capital improvement plan. It is not widely used as I've experienced by many municipalities. Um, I believe the city of Summit has gone through this process where they have a capital improvement plan that provides kind of dollars and cents to the recommendations in their master plan that could come out of this effort, uh, but this effort has to be completed first. So if there's any um, you know, questions just about plans in general, um, this, this I thought was a good time uh, to break. If everybody is an expert already, uh, I have no, uh, I could just keep going. Keep going. Okay, you got it. Um, so uh, some things just, uh, you know, that, that I thought were interesting personally, um, that Will and I thought were interesting about, um, you know, some of the demographics uh, as we studied uh, the, the census and some of the newly released data, um, that Long Hill's uh, population is relatively stable, um, if not slightly declining, uh, 8,702 in 2010, and then uh, 8430 in 2019. Um, but at the same time, uh, school enrollment uh, during similar periods, not the same exact apples to apples, uh, has increased by 27 students uh, from 830 to 857. And then you know why? Year, I don't know why. You know why? More children, more children, I would assume. Well, yeah, obviously more children, <clears throat> and also the uh, Catholic school in town closed down. Oh, interesting. You should have known that. And now I do. Uh, Long Hill residents are largely um, aging in place. That um, generally speaking, uh, the average age here is older than, um, than the average of Morris County and the average uh, in the state of New Jersey, as are the percentage of residents uh, 65 years or older. 14, uh, and, and, the, and that number has been increasing uh, since 2010. Um, so some key land use objectives that are uh, in the current draft of the land use element um, that, and these are things that we heard from the committee that we've heard um, from the surveys uh, that have been circulated that um, zoning, de de zoning de designations um, should generally reflect the existing neighborhood character in which they're located and I'll say that this is more of like a preservation goal than an aspiration goal, um, that there's a desire to protect um, environmentally sensitive areas, that there's a, um, a desire to pres uh, preserve, as we've seen in almost every municipality we've ever worked, to preserve the character of single family residential neighborhoods um, and to uh, enhance uh, in, uh, in, a, in a narrow way, the existing walkable mixed use neighborhoods and to encourage sustainable growth in the existing commercial centers. So this is uh, our kind of status matrix. Um, as you could see here, there's a, there's a few uh, that have not been completed uh, to date uh, in terms of drafting, uh, review from the planning board, review and comment and formatting. Um, that have not been completed, the, the rest really have. Uh, and we've provided you copies of those. And um, those are drafts. We are more than happy to work with you uh, to receive comment, to you know, talk about it, discuss uh, whatever. So when I say that these things are completed, it does not 
um, by any stretch mean that um, they're they're you should feel like they're being imposed um, on you at all. Uh, they're just currently um, that we have a complete draft uh, at this point. The land use element um, still we need to work with you on. Uh, it's extremely important uh, element of the plan and that we, we need to collaborate with this board in order to even kind of complete our draft. We have uh, a basic draft done, but that needs work, um, as does the historic preservation um, element. So what we would anticipate um, kind of in terms of next steps is to finalize and format any remaining elements um, to generate uh, additional materials. We were asked um, and Will would you. have, you can't hear me? I can hear talking? you. Go. Keep going. I can hear you. Okay. If Dennis can't hear, that's a problem. D Dennis, can you hear? I thought I heard Dennis say something. Yeah, he said that he couldn't. I, d I yeah. thought that he couldn't hear. I thought he got back on. Oh, whatever. Um, Mr. Chair? Dennis. Maybe his uh, headphone. Can you I hear us? Hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. I can hear you, Dennis. Okay, I'm sorry. I that's lost right. it right about the top of this slide. Okay, that's good. Um, so as I was saying, that, that kind of our remaining uh, task to, con to continue work, um, to finalize and format, um, you know, any of these additional elements um, th there was, uh, as, my, as I understand it, some request for us to produce some additional maps. Uh, Will would have more information on that directly and that, um, that we're happy to and prepared to, to do that. And that um, we would uh, be working with you to prepare presentations uh, to the public for the final um, you know, presentations like this that actually uh, present the content um, of the master plan so the public knows what's in there. Um, and to facilitate any workshops or hearings uh, that need to occur in terms of collaboration with you um, as board members or any other stakeholders you'd like us to be chatting with. Um, your remaining uh, homework, if I may be so bold as to suggest, um, is to sort of agree to this process or, or, or refine this process that I've suggested, um, make a determination how, uh, what I'll call project governance, um, you know, who and how, um, you know, do you prefer us to be working with and who and how um, shall decisions uh, be made regarding the content um, that the board really should be the ones uh, as a full board to comment and review uh, and to host uh, public hearings and formal action. So um, the budget that we've put to the remainder of this effort, uh, um, you know, given some of these changes and given the kind of uh, uh, process uh, um, modifications that have happened, uh, a, a range between seven to $9,000, depending on the types of maps um, that will be required. But uh, that, that is the, the budget and, and we're prepared to advance that on a fixed fee basis. Um, so, you know, you have certainty uh, and that is a fixed dollar amount that will, that will bring you to completion on this plan. Um, and as we've looked at it, and I'm gonna show you in a minute how we would uh, try to go about this to, to bring this to completion uh, approximately three months from a notice to proceed. So um, the next uh, slide here kind of shows as an example timeline, uh, we looked at the next council meeting from today, I think is on May 3rd. Uh, so if we were authorized to proceed on May 3rd, um, we would work with you to receive comments and we say comment period doesn't mean you have to do that by yourself, that we're happy to uh, you know, have one-on-one -on -one conversations, have small group conversations, have entire board conversations um, you know, during the course of May. Um, and then in the, the end of May, the, in the um, following week, we would go back in the beginning of June, assess your feedback, revise and review um, kind of finalized elements with you. Um, in that time as well, um, kind of in the middle of, of June, uh, we'd be working with you to um, finalize that land use element um, and, and really dig into um, the, the details on that. And then between the end of uh, May, and a lot of these things will work on parallel tracks as we begin to check the boxes 
Um, but our goal um, would be to work with you to get it done uh, by July 4th, by Independence Day. So I think that that is um, my last slide. We have Will's uh, information up here for any of you or any members um, of the public who are watching that uh, do have questions about this and um, you know, just wanted to provide a point of contact. Um, so Will's here uh, with me tonight. We're both happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, and, uh, and again, I do appreciate your time and appreciate uh, the opportunity to have worked with you um, over these past couple of years. Will, do you want to make a speech? Um, well, I mean, I would echo several of the sentiments that uh, the Phil has um, gone through on uh, my gratitude for um, having uh, been able to work with uh, the members of this board um, that I have over the past year. Um, I think um, that the, the volunteer efforts that have that brought this plan to this point are, are very impressive in my estimation. Um, it was perhaps an unconventional um, process compared to what we normally do in, in most communities with uh, long-term planning projects like this. Um, but I would say uh, that you, the approach that you've taken um, has resulted in a substantial cost savings for the township. Um, and it's, it's inspiring to see, I think, at, at least the level of personal commitment of um, so many residents to, to contribute to something that's as important and uh, frankly as difficult uh, as, as drafting um, a, a municipal master plan. Thanks, Will. At this point, I have a large number of questions, but I'm gonna open it up for the other board members to get their questions out of the way first. So who would like to start questioning this proposal? Mr. Chair, can I start? Go ahead. I guess my first question is, what do you see, Phil, uh, as the, the biggest challenge right now to completing what needs to be done based on your experience uh, with the community, with the board, et cetera? Yeah. Um... I mean, I think that some of the, and I'm gonna, I wanna let Will speak as well because he's had much more direct interaction um, with you all. But I think that there's been some, what I'll call governance challenges, um, that there's been, um, you know, up to this point, a committee uh, that has been kind of working with us. Um, I've had conversations with, with some of you. Uh, my understanding is that um, that might be changing. So I think whenever, you know, whenever you're kind of changing the governance model, um, that could be a tricky moment um, in, in like bringing in different voices and, and how, you know, how to kind of keep it on track and keep things moving. Um, so I would say that that's one thing. Uh, and then, you know, bringing forward uh, the land use element, as Will said, this is complex. Um, we're we're uh, hamstrung um, by the realities of, of kind of being on Zoom uh, and needing to kind of operate in this way and not being able to get around a table uh, you know, with you or, or especially members of the public, if, um, if that was the desire to, um, you know, to kind of have those back and forth conversations, this is not the optimal format in my view for this sort of thing. Um, and I, I, I do think that ultimately, uh, at, at the end of this process, um, there will be public hearings. And I think this board will need to make a decision, uh, whether, whether you want it to uh, kind of rely on the, what I'll call the statute, the minimum statutory requirements, meaning that one hearing or however many it takes, or are there things um, that the board wants to do uh, that go beyond that um, to sort of reach out to the public, especially in a moment like this, it's extremely difficult and we've had a lot of challenges um, in doing that. But I think that a lot of the content is here, as Will said, you have a really good board, um, a board that's very engaged, a board that's very knowledgeable, a board that's willing to, to do the work. Uh, a lot of times that ends up being the challenge is just getting people's attention. Um, so, you know, we don't have that challenge here, um, but Will might have other thoughts that relate specifically much more to your process. 
Uh, one or two. Uh, to add to that, I would say that there are going to be a number of judgment calls um, that you as a board will have to make and as it relates to the content of the plan. Um, it's uh, We understand that there is a, um, a discrepancy or a difference of opinion uh, on the proper approach to take um, to the historic preservation element between um, two of the groups that are active within the township. That's a judgment call that's going to have to be made by the board. Um, as well as a few other um, discrete items within the land use element um, that are um, items that, that we could make a professional uh, recommendation for to the best of our discretion. Um, but our, our things really, I think, uh, would be um, best at the uh, at the discretion of the board to, to really give us that that guiding vision as to what um, what it is you'd like to see. Don, do you have any other questions? Um, I do, but why don't we go around to other members? Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, what do you see? I mean, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the town and um, it's, it's, it's character and but it was fairly kind of, it was somewhat general in the presentation. I mean, you've worked with us now for a year or so. Uh, so, you know, tell us, tell us a little bit about ourselves, I guess, from what, from what you've seen. And then the other thing is, uh, uh, you know, we have, um, you know, obviously we have the, our affordable housing settlement uh, that, that we've, uh, that we've entered into and, and there are, uh, changes underway. Uh, a number of the the uh, hearings that we've had and and will do over the course of this year. So, uh, how do you weave that into the the uh, changes um, that are going to come? Uh, you know, within within the community. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll say a couple things, and then I'm going to really ask uh, Will um, to to really address the first point um, that you had asked. Um, it seems to me, and and you know, again, this is a this is a back and forth. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that uh, the the hard work or the pain on the affordable housing settlement um, has kind of uh, passed. Uh, that you know that you've reached a settlement. Um, that you have a plan in place, and that really our job at this point is to um, make sure that the land use element reflects. Um, the, the nature of the settlement sites um, and, and what, you know, where they are and what kind of densities are there. Um, you know, a conversation could be uh, as part of the land use element. Um, if, if those created any opportunities um, or any, um, you know, potential detriments, these, uh, the higher density projects that you want to mitigate against or that you want to um, try to capitalize upon uh, the land use element could explore um, some of those things to try to, um, you know, again, uh, enhance uh, the benefits or mitigate against some of the risks or concerns uh, that came from those affordable sites. Um, so I think that that one's, uh, you know, relatively straightforward. And then, um, you know, I think one of the other things, and this is coming more from my experience during uh, the visioning sessions, um, is that there is a... Uh, Amongst the public, at least, maybe the board is, uh, you know, all a, of one of unity of vision. Um, but amongst the members of the public, uh, and amongst, you know, what I'll say, Hamlet to Hamlet in Long Hill, um, there are uh, different views of the future um, and different types of concerns. Um, and I think that Long Hill, uh, you know, I was interested, and one of the reasons I brought up those demographics um, is that Long Hill is more stable demographically um, than, I, than I had uh, anticipated, uh, quite frankly, based on some of the attitudes um, that we experienced during engagement sessions. Um, and that Long Hill, um, I didn't expect the ages, I thought that Long Hill's ages would be going uh, lower, frankly, um, because you know, there are concerns in, in almost every suburban community uh, about uh, the school system and uh, stress upon the school system. 
And um, so th that's, you know, that was one of the reasons why we included that data point. Um, but that there's uh, quite a diversity of opinions here and people are very passionate um, about them in both directions. And, uh, and I think that that's a challenge. Uh, it could be an opportunity, um, but I think it's a challenge to sort of, um, you know, mold those uh, in, in, into a single narrative that, uh, uh, that this board kind of is responsible for putting together um, about the future uh, of your township. So, Will, I don't know if you have any other uh, kind of insights uh, Deputy Mayor is asking for. Sure. Um, well, in addition to the diversity of opinions that Bill was referring to, um, I, I've come to appreciate some uh, dichotomies in, in the built and natural environment as well. Um, I think that uh, Long Hill Township is uh, quite unique and it's a uh, sort of a, an oasis or certainly much more of a, a quiet residential setting than many places within um, that region of, of North, northern New Jersey. Uh, yet there's a strong desire to, uh, at least in, in the outreach that I've conducted um, and in a lot of the sentiments of, of folks that I've worked with here, um, to enhance the livability and to, to develop some, some strong um, uh, commercial cores within certain um, certain villages, your your Millingtons or, or Sterling and the um, Valley Business District, um, and uh, you have a uh, an abundance of natural resources. There is, uh, I think, more protected uh, natural open space within Long Hill Township than any other community we work in, um, which is a tremendous asset. It's a it's a it's a precious uh, thing uh, that uh, I think has to be protected and is a, um, a benefit for, for your residents, um, but could also be a burden if it uh, creates challenges for how you're able to um, develop in the way that you'd like to. Um, I'm sure the things like flood zone regulations have, have caused some headaches. I know they have. Um, and so, um, so yes, uh, a diversity of opinions and uh, um, a diverse set of um, of land use challenges. But you know, I would say uh, one of the better pieces of advice I've gotten about master planning. Um, it's not necessarily uh, about um, the doors that's uh, that you open. Or, that you walk through, but the, the doors you keep open and the options that you keep open for yourself. Um, and I think that that is, uh, is an, an important uh, consideration for the township. And it's another question, if I can. Go ahead, David. So I know we, were, um, where we talked a little bit last year about um, the sort of maybe long-term ramifications of the pandemic and maybe changes to to land use, work from home, et cetera. Phil, have you guys, or Will, have you seen much movement of thought as to where that would take us in the next five, 10 years, or how much to reflect upon that in the current master plan? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a pretty fascinating question. <laughs> um, and uh, so on tomorrow morning, I'm teaching a class uh, for Rutgers, uh, uh, an affordable housing class uh, for professional certification and so for every semester, I update the housing data and look at the housing market. Um, and, you know, obviously home prices in Northern New Jersey, uh, especially in communities like Long Hill and where I am in Mountainside, and I'm sure many others um, have become much less affordable. Uh, or another way of saying that is that everybody's house prices, everybody's home values have gone up. Um, so it depends, I guess, what, what seat you're sitting in. Um, but the housing market has definitely been affected um, all the data that we're reading uh, is that that is not likely to change. Um, housing preferences do seem to be favoring places like Long Hill, where there is, um, you know, light air and open space, uh, and that it is, um, you know, folks are still gung ho going uh, going hard on um, multifamily and townhomes and things like that. Um, rents are decreasing. Uh, multifamily rents are decreasing. And the sale prices on townhomes, generally speaking, are decreasing. 
or uh, holding stable. They're not keeping pace with what's happening with single family homes. Uh, construction prices are skyrocketing right now. Uh, the price of lumber is up between three and 400%, um, largely because of uh, supply issues, but people will be, um, or people have been putting more money into their, into their existing homes. Um, and that is something that's likely to continue. I think that zoning boards everywhere, um, you know, and even the IRS are trying to figure out, uh, you know, how, how do we deal with people wanting to work from home? What is a business expense? If I want to uh, do an attached uh, garage office thing, carriage house, um, you, you know, th these, these might be types of things that continue. I think the, um, the regional reliance on New York City as an employment center uh, over, I would say a five-year period uh, is not gonna be what, what we all grew up with um, and what we all kind of became accustomed to. I think five, beyond five years, it's hard to predict, um, you, know, you know, what that will be. Um, uh, uh, you know, and, and like, I don't know, you know, if you all, um, for those of you who celebrated Easter, um, I had a very normal Easter uh, and one with no masks and almost no talk of COVID. Uh, and I remembered about it after everybody left the house. So um, it, it also did remind me just anecdotally of like how quickly things can kind of go back to normal um, and how, you know, and, and they are. So uh, it's a really interesting question. Um, it's a really interesting topic. I think generally speaking, if there are winners and losers uh, from this pandemic, a place like Long Hill would be, a, would be probably on the winner side of the column, um, just in terms of property values and desirability. Um, not to say that like anybody is a winner uh, in this thing. It's been a horrible experience. People have lost their lives and, and I don't mean to be, uh, you know, whatever about that, but. Thank you, Professor. Um, it's a good I'd question. Like, I'd like to drag the, con welcome. the conversation back towards the role of topology in completing this master plan. I, there's, there's all kinds of wonderful lectures about the economy and about how wonderful Long Hill is. But we're here to talk about the continuation of the topology contract to finish. So can we have, are there any more questions that focus on that? Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Abramson, thank you very much for being here tonight. Um, I'm just going to kind of dial back to the original contract that we had uh, when we uh, first started uh, putting this master plan together. In that uh, original contract, it was stated that you would complete the entire process. And here you are in front of us asking for additional time and some additional monies to complete the project. So mm -hmm. I guess my first question is, what were the challenges and why we couldn't complete that in the original contract? And what faith do we have that you're going to complete it with the request that you have on the table today? Sure. Um, well, uh, if, you know, if, again, hold I, on, I, hold on a second. I'd, I'd like to supplement Tom's question uh, by saying that every time we hear from topology, it's always three more months. First, it was gonna be July of last year, then it was gonna be the end of last year. Now, once again, we're hearing three more months. Uh, thank you, Tom, for letting me focus on those words, three more months. And, the, and at uh, the March, uh, bear with me, the January 14th meeting of the planning board, uh, Will said, quote, so confident am I, close quote, about finishing up last July. How, 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 do we, how do we stand in terms of believing any deadline that you put on the table? Well, I'm gonna let Will speak for himself. Fair enough. Um, so, I mean, uh, initially uh, our, our scope was premised on a, a given set of elements uh, and understanding of how far along those were. Um, and relatively early on, uh, it was decided collectively that our efforts would be best used in a, a review and revise capacity uh, as um, the process that was established at that point with the master plan committee uh, to use their requisite knowledge of the township to generate um, 
to generate content. Um, we wanted to respect that process. Uh, and I think there was definite value to it, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, in terms of cost savings and, uh, and, and getting the, the local knowledge I think the plan really needed. Um, but it sacrificed a degree of efficiency, to be sure, um, taking uh, more time than it would have if we had simply drafted content on our own uh, and, and presented it to, to the board for review. Um, as this project evolved, uh, the scope of, of the project also expanded uh, as well. Um, there was a, an additional uh, circulation element uh, as and the, the recognized need for creating a introduction section to the overall plan. Uh, and finally adjusting the anticipated outreach uh, timeline and, and process to uh, accommodate COVID-19 restrictions. Um, and in response, um, we had to take more time reviewing additional work products. We had to uh, adjust the process that uh, we had originally set out with uh, and take some time uh, and staffing resources away from uh, original scope items. Um, yet, those yet the, were... the, uh, the chairman of the master plan committee arranged, and I don't know how he did it, to have meetings every single week in a no commute. All you have to do is sit in front of your uh, computer environment. So the master plan committee obviously was intensely involved in this. So uh, why, why was, why did that involvement prevent, I think that's what you're suggesting, topology from meeting its goals? Uh, I would say that all of those decisions um, were made collectively between uh, ourselves and the master plan committee. Uh, and I think that the master plan committee, uh, as it existed then, recognized this. And as you said, they, uh, beyond question, did their absolute best to put in the sweat equity um, to, to make up for this work. Um, and uh, again, I, I think that was important. Um, but what it did, what it did sacrifice was a, a degree of, uh, of efficiency. Um, in addition, again, to, uh, the need to, uh, adjust outreach plans, uh, and, um, and respond to an evolving scope. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I, I'm, if you could dig into a little bit, uh, into this, well, when you say it sacrificed efficiencies, I don't really know what that means. Could you give me some concrete examples there? And then the other, the, the follow-up to that is, right, is that you've worked with us for a year, you worked under, you know, with, with the master plan committee and you're, you're, you're dead right. The, 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 the master plan committee was uh, seven years where we had, uh, yeah, we had many volunteers taking time out of their, uh, you know, their, their, their lives to, to, to sit down and, and, and work with the committee. It was a very commendable effort, right? But it seems from what you're saying that it wasn't probably the way that you would want things to, to uh, work in the future if you, were to, if, you were to, if you were to continue with the process. So can you give me concrete examples of what the inefficiencies were or, or uh, in the process and then tell me how, if you were to sit down with us, you, you don't want us to repeat that and, and how you would recommend that you work with us. All right. Um, so in, in, uh, in response to the first part of that question, um, it, it's an unusual process or perhaps an unconventional process for us to, um, to not be the primary content generators. And, and so um, when I was working with the master plan committee, uh, as, as a more concrete example, there would be uh, a lot of these working sessions where um, uh, they would be, uh, and, and I, I think it would be perhaps helpful for this conversation um, for either David or perhaps somebody else from the master plan committee to, to speak to this process as well. Um, but I will say for my part that um, to 
that the much of my time was was spent um, uh, providing guidance and um, uh, revising content that the that the master plan committee was was generating in these meetings as they they sat and and discussed language changes or um, different kind of policy approaches that they wanted to um, include within the plan. Uh, to move forward, uh, I think in a much more expeditious fashion, um, I would highly recommend um, that uh, that we would be allowed to, to, to take the reins, uh, to become the, the, the primary content generators, uh, and to have um, either with the board or, or with perhaps a, a, a subcommittee of, of the board um, for us to bring content to, to review um, kind of on, on parallel tracks uh, as, as we develop uh, additional content uh, as opposed to the other way around. Does that largely answer your question? Largely, yep, yep, okay. I, I'm sorry, uh, it, it sounds, Mr. Kurtzenberger, that you're respectfully trying to gracefully and nicely answer that question. Um, but at some point you had to realize that we were not, you were not gonna meet the deliverable of the contract. So at what point, or Mr. Abramson, at what point did you know that you weren't going to be able to meet that contract, the delivery? because the delivery was, the ask was to complete the master plan. So if there, there were nuances that were slowing you down, at some point you would have had to have escalated that up to make somebody aware that that was not going to be met, that you'd be coming back before us to say, we need another three months and we need X amount of dollars to complete it. So I'm going back to my original question. Uh, I would say that the, that, deadline or that timeline came down largely to to the wire and uh i would say those those conversations um largely took place during the month of december yeah that's the 11th hour so i'm assuming mr abramson you you, you were not aware that the contract was not going to be complete in its entirety not in these terms no thank you Thank you for an honest answer. Uh, I think I'm about ready to start my line of questioning if no one else minds. The first question I'd like to ask is, I have a uh, proposal, which is undated and not on letterhead, which I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't know who wrote it. Uh, but it says 46 hours, $6,900, billed at 150 per hour, uh, additional services outside this scope, and I'm not sure what this scope is, but we'll discuss that later, would be billed hourly at $175 an hour, which says that any, any bit of this work that can't be done in 46 hours would step up to a higher rate. Uh, on the other hand, Philip, during your discussion, you used the word fixed fee. T tell me how many hours you're willing to put in for seven to $9,000. I don't uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't know um, from where that proposal came from. That was, uh that was Will, you put that together under last year, correct? That, that's correct. This was um, sent to the master plan. Yeah, and, that's, and distributed to the board uh, a little while, a few months ago. Okay. And uh, David, or uh, Will, how, what were the pretenses in which I think it, I think the context matters here, right? Um, how was that distributed? Why was it distributed? I mean, if it was distributed without letterhead, it sounds like it was probably done as part of a draft uh, for collab you know, discussion purposes, not intended to be um, something to be distributed uh, or for consideration in this regard. So 
that's correct. Uh, you know, it's um, uh, was prepared for the specifically for the master plan um, committee uh, and the scope to finish the the plan as um, as discussed with them. Um, for this, uh, you know, I recognize that we're working under a, a different structure. Um, and we wanted to allow that the flexibility for, for you all to uh, come with perhaps some changes to, to that scope uh, that, that you may wish to see. Um, however, um, we, we also want to make it clear that, uh, that we're, we're committed to, to completing this process. Uh, but you, but, but yeah. you're saying that anything over the first 46 hours would be billed at a higher rate. Wait, hold on, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Business? Wait, hold on, Mr. Chairman. What you're looking at was a draft document prepared for consideration, not by you and not by this board, but by the master plan committee, okay? So what we, what I have said to you is mm -hmm. what stands, is what my firm is putting out. That's my word and my integrity as a matter of professional integrity when I tell you that something is fixed fee and that we will get it done under a certain fixed fee, we will do that. So and that's what I want many, you to hear. How many hours do you contemplate? Well, hopefully it won't take that many, but it will take no. however many hours it takes. I won't accept however hopefully. many hours it takes. We will get this job done. I that's will not accept. Here. I will not accept. Hopefully I was a founding member of the master plan committee back in 2014 and I nursed the land use element along for three years until I uh, left the committee for better things. And I have gone through the most recent version that I can find of every element. And I come up with an estimate of around 300 hours work left to do. Um, is that, would you, would you contemplate stepping up to 300 hours for $9,000? Uh, I would not. Um... And, you know, perhaps what we need to understand from you uh, is to make sure that we're aligned in terms of expectations then, because we, we may have been approaching this with a kind of a completing the drafts that are uh, pending. Um, but if 300 hours uh, of effort is, uh, you know, in your opinion, is what is what is required, then I think that we need to have a conversation about the scope of work. There are a lot of there are a lot of missing pieces in the in the doc, uh, I'm sorry, in the elements that you did not list as ripe for improvement. Uh, for example, you still talk about the town improving its sewer system and listing a number of items that are required to improve the sewer system. In fact, we sold the sewer system to a commercial vendor uh, last summer and under contract, he is obligated to make all those improvements and so the master plan that goes into great length about why import, how important these improvements are, that's all ancient history at this point. Uh, that that uh, utilities element has to be reworked and it's not even on your list. Uh, that's an example. There's probably 10, 12 hours worth of work get just getting those improvements done right in the utilities element. Uh, well, each uh, element, I mean, each element has frailties like that that we could go into. Uh, the circulation element talks about uh, completing Delaware Avenue. Uh, that'll be done within the next two months by the planning board. That'll be ancient history by the time this uh, plan is finished. I am I am troubled by the amount of ancient history that is recorded in these elements as if they were part of a plan for the future. And that's, that's where the hours come from, is to do a total scrub of old writings and bring them up to date. So my understanding and Yes, I agree you're... that, I, yes, I agree that the uh, township uh, members have to give you that input, but it's not going to be a trivial amount of hours that you're going to want to take to uh, incorporate all that. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Philip. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I think that, you know, a, a couple things, and again, I'm, I'm uh, coming in from behind, but I hope that, um, you know, the board can, can um, like, accept the fact that I've, I've com I'm coming here personally, I'm stepping up here personally, um, you know, as the founder of this firm, I do not, I, I would not want this relationship 
uh, or, or this project uh, to end on these terms. So I'm committed uh, to seeing this through as a matter of my professional integrity. I know I'm going to get there. Hold on. Uh, so the, the scope of work uh, that we were under contract for did not include, uh, you know, an original a drafting of a new utilities element, as I understand it. It did not include the drafting of a new circulation element. If there, if, if there were, um, if there are things that, that should be looked at in that regard, then we would be happy to work with you on those. What I'm talking about here um, is my understanding of the amount of time that it would uh, be required uh, of my understanding of the scope that was contracted for. And that is, some of these things that you're talking about are outside of that scope. Did the did the 15 page contract that was signed in September of 2019 talk about a turnkey master plan or did it list certain excluded elements? Tom, you've read the contract recently. Do you have an answer to that? Okay. Philip, were there certain excluded? I don't want to have to pull it up right now, but I don't recall that there were excluded elements. I think it was a, a turnkey proposal for a complete master plan. Well, do you have any knowledge of this? Uh, no, I do not believe that the contract it's, uh, itself refers to specific elements. Um, again, when we were brought on, uh, we were presented with uh, a number of elements which we were asked to, uh, to either update or, or create. Um, and the elements that were included with our, within our pres presentation uh, earlier um, were, were those elements. Can I say a few words? David, you have the floor. Go ahead. Firstly, I, obviously, I, I, I'm not sure if I agree with the 300 hours, then it's, you know that. Well, you know that I, I, it's, it's I irrelevant whether you I, agree Dennis, with it or Dennis, not. Dennis. I was stating my opinion. I know. I'm just saying. And Dennis, I'm talking. Um, and the utility elements we said is, you know, needs a reflection. The housing element may need a reflection, but these, I mean, utility element is eight pages. This is not a big element. But the idea was to incorporate all these historical elements, if you will, that were done over the last couple of years, and then, um, you know, put them into ideally one cohesive master plan. If there were, and we talked about maybe either whether it's an introductory piece or comment on the sewer cell, which is a new piece of information, obviously from last year, or do we have to open up the element itself to incorporate that information? But again, we're only talking about a few paragraphs anyhow within the utility element. The um, housing element is a different story. That's some maybe that again how we handle well that, i'd leave that to topology to continue to think about how to handle that where we need to open up or with, um, make a notation in the introduction that there has been the uh, modifications to the housing element because of uh, one or two new sites and replacement of an old site so whether it's 300 hours or 46 hours you know maybe the um topology can go back and take another look just to make sure they're comfortable as to what their actual hours are done. Again, we spent a lot of time last year, including the land use. We're finding a lot of that information. And um, I, I think that's in reasonably good form. Yeah. Historical elements, reasonably good form. I'm not debating there's still some work to be done. I, you know, whether, it's, again, I don't know how to debate whether it's 50 hours or 300, but... Uh, uh, I don't know if it's, I don't even think it's in between personally, but uh, that's a bit of apology to maybe. Respect. My next question for Mr. Abramson and Mr. Kurtzberger is the question of the invisible hand. There is an invisible hand in this process. Her name is Greer. Uh, I don't know whether Greer is a part of this team, is the leader of this team, or is the anchor of this team. But in the 10 meetings that I sat in late last year of the master plan committee dealing with land use, Greer was at three of those 10. At the meeting she was not at, uh, Will said, we'll have to take this back to Greer. At the three meetings she was at, she left early two of them. Um, I don't know whether Greer has a role here. And if she does, why she isn't available and actually participating. 
So, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I wanted to be here uh, today because, um, you know, perhaps like you uh, and like you board members, um, I, I've had my concerns with how this process has played out and uh, the, the types of answers that I was getting uh, in terms of where we stood and what was next. Um, that's why I came here personally. And that's why I, you know, that this is my firm that I founded, um, that I wanted to see this through uh, to completion and that I needed to understand directly from you uh, what that is and what is required. I will make decisions uh, about how my staff is allocated and we can have those discussions together about what staff members you are and you are not comfortable with. So it's not a uh, question of comfort. It's a question of, of uh, participation. You, you can send me anybody who can do the job as long as they keep coming and not sitting. Uh, we'll have to take this back to Greer because she's not here today. That's that's what troubled me. Right. That's um, why I call it the invisible hand. I thought you were talking about um, Mr. Hands, but uh, I. I understand your point. Um, I understand the discontents. I understand the frustrations. Um, I, what I can tell you at this point, um, in, as you weigh your options to move ahead, I personally will be involved. We, I will uh, bring Greer in on the land use element um, because that is her expertise and she is talented and she does have um, an understanding um, and has listened to a lot um, of, of you and up from the committee uh, over the course of the, the year or two. Um, that it's been. Um, but in terms of uh, being someone uh, kind of in charge of seeing this thing through com to completion, um, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry that any of us are in this position right now and that we have to be having this conversation right now. Um, so I take responsibility, the buck stops with me and, and, uh, and, I, and I'd like to see it through to completion. So you don't need to worry. Um, and I could tell you that, uh, you know, and that's all I can do is to say that as, as uh, you know, my word, that you won't need to worry about, um, you know, any sort of reliability issues, uh, you know, moving ahead. Um, and if, if I, while I have the floor for a moment, if I could say one additional thing, um, you know, some of the stuff around the scope and the utility element and these different elements, um, you know, what, what could be helpful um, to understand uh, you know, a, a, as we em, a, embark or not embark on this endeavor is to understand exactly what the expectations of the board are. You know, as I presented earlier, there's a number of required elements. There's a number of optional elements. The elements that ultimately were done and, you know, shame on us for not specifying in the actual contract itself um, what, which elements would be, would be expected of us. Um, but that was done in coordination with the uh, master plan committee that was done that there would be certain elements that would all kind of uh, call DIY elements, um, ones where um, the, municip the, the volunteers were writing and we were in editor mode, uh, and there would be ones that, that we were taking the lead on producing ourselves. So, you know, I am happy to give you um, a fixed fee. I'm happy to give you certainty. I'm happy to give you, uh, you know, a time hour early budget. The, the numbers that I quoted you were um, for what we understood to be the expectation of us by, by the board. And, and if that's not accurate, we need to have a conversation about that. Well, we're having that conversation now because this is, this is the point where you make your case for continuing with this project. And I appreciate your promises, but I don't think you're answering the questions about the performance of your firm in the past. Uh, let me move on to the next point, however. I, we keep talking about the fact that the historic preservation element is uh, one of the items. And in this working draft, which I wasn't supposed to see, it says the uh, historic preservation element is about 90% complete. Now, here I have a tremendous version control problem. Last week, Will sent us his latest version of the historic preservation element. It was 38 pages long and it was dated October, 2019. And it was of course marked final. Everything you guys produce is marked final regardless of whether it's the first final or the fifth final. Uh, but the version we got last week was, was from October, 2019. Earlier 
this year in January, Mr. Han sent me a version of 27 pages. And I also dated May. And I also have a version with the same May date on it that's 21 pages. Later on, an 18 page version was available and was passed off to the Historic Preservation Advisory Committee for their comments. And for the third or fourth time in the past two years, the Historic Preservation Committee said, we totally absolutely disagree with an 18 page document. And two years ago, we gave you a three page document, which we think covers everything that has to be said about historic preservation. Nowhere in any of the writings uh, do I see any recognition that the opinions of the Historic Preservation Advisory Commission Committee have been included in, your, uh, in anybody's writing. In fact, I can't understand why with a discrepancy between 28 pages, uh, 38 pages, 27, 21, 18, and a three page alternative, how we could possibly be 90% complete. Although I'm sure that the remaining 10% is in your 46 hour estimate, uh, there's a whole lot more work to do on historic preservation, including a massive understanding of which version is the right version to present to the planning board for adoption. How, how did we get so far apart on this one little item? Let me add, if I might, Will. You no, might no, no, David, please. I'd like to hear, this is, this is Topology's turn to answer. I disagree. I'd like to hear, I'd like to hear from, uh, from, uh, from Mr. Hans, who was the chairman of the, uh, uh, the committee at the time. This is, this is, this was committee activity. Um, David, please. I don't mind. I will, I'll defer to Mr. Files' uh, request. Go ahead, David. All right. So, I, 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 Will, I, I'm just going to follow up on what, what you said about Will. Well, as far as I'm concerned, just so we're clear, I sent out the last state of the historical preservation element to the board back in uh, whatever date it was. Hang on a second. It was in May. No, it well, you, it was dated May, but you sent it in early January. No, it wasn't. I sent it on May, March the 12th, the, the elements, and it's 20 pages. Right? That is the one and incorporates discussions of HPAC plus historical society. And there's areas for, on the recommendations, we've, we've, we've got to go through it. That's why it's not complete in my mind. And then I'm not sure why you think nobody's supposed to, you weren't supposed to see something 95%. I don't know where that came from. So um, we, then yeah, Will, can you just really a question to Will? I didn't look at the documents that you forwarded out because as far as I'm aware, this version dated 528.20 and the one I sent out to the board in March, in my estimation, is the most current version. Is that what you have, Will, or you have something else that you sent out? Um, so the latest draft that I have uh, for the historic preservation element um, was completed uh, back on in uh, June of last year. Um, I would have to take a, uh, a closer look, David, at what you had sent out um, and just kind of a, uh, a higher level timeline of, of what we went through with, with both the committee uh, and, and HPAC. Um, to our understanding, and from what had been communicated back to us by the master plan committee, uh, the content was considered generally complete uh, and that that version was updated and last circulated on June the 1st. Yeah. Did, uh, you, did you see the uh, HPAC response in October uh, to, the, to the draft, which literally tore it apart and said, we don't need all this, we can't support all this, did you see that and did you factor it into your 90% estimate? 
So we did um, we did receive uh, HPAC's uh, critique uh, and their proposed alternative element. Uh, and at that point, uh, again, it was conveyed to us by the committee uh, that um, uh, that that alternative element um, wasn't in line with the the master plan um committee's goals or, or the intent of, of what they hope to see in the in the master plan um but uh as i said earlier i think that that is um one of the most important judgment calls um answering now to to the planning board as a as a whole um that would need to be made i'd like to hear from tom alanowski he was a member of that committee and he has been heard. Before I just, if I might, just will just just a, on the version. The, the version one I had was September last year, and my I'm just going to read my note to the planning board in my email of March the 12th of this year. I state: Historic preservation element draft not being presented to the planning board and waiting review of the comments from HPAC who are able to pine on recommendations for ordinance and charter. So. Yes, we've got the HPAC's latest versions working with, um, but we haven't reviewed those in committee to that point. So that's as far as I'm aware, where we should have left off. There's the okay, you, you have not reviewed those comments in the committee. So how what number would you assign instead of 90%? Because I don't think there's, I think, uh, what can I tell you? We spent a lot of time on the introduction work um, and I think the recommendations are largely in line with what uh, Mage Packer said as well, uh, to a large part. Right? Things like um, resources and what have you, I haven't looked at it in a while. So, yes, I, I stand behind 95%. Tom Malinowski, would you like yes, to comment Chairman, on this? Chairman, uh, just to go back and refresh everybody on, on the Mage Pack. <clears throat> I believe it was in March last year. I don't have the dates in front of me. And I, I don't remember exactly when it was. Uh, Greer and I attended a meeting at the old schoolhouse with HPAC. Mm -hmm. uh, and Greer wanted to get a feel for what they thought and to present them to what she thought had to be included in the historical preservation element in the master plan. Uh, right from the start, there was kind of a disagreement as to which version uh, we should go with and HPAC presented us their three-page um, document that they said, this is all that has to be included. Uh, and, you know, Greer acted professionally, tried to tell them, well, we need to include um, the list of historic properties, the list of historic districts, anything that uh, should be included in there. And we even got down to debates whether, you know, pictures or no pictures should be in there, which may change the amount of pages in the versions of the documents you have, because some may contain pictures and some may not. Uh, then I believe we kind of tabled that and we were waiting for HPAC to respond after Greer had sent them a uh, request for information and how we can resolve it to try to take the two documents and get one working document that everybody would agree with. And it probably wasn't, David, correct me if I'm wrong, but that document in October, I think, might have been their response that we had been waiting all summer for. Uh, and it was basically yeah. the same three page document with the same comments, shooting down everything that the master plan committee had put together. So that, you know, you, you talk, we talk about delays and everything that, that happened while this whole uh, master plan committee was going on and the trouble with the Zoom and meetings and not having in person right. face to face meetings. Uh, there was a lot of lost time in trying to share information back and forth. And the, yeah. the biggest delay was on the part of HPAC. I mean, the rec department got back to us relatively quick several times. Um, and then to send us back the same document with no compromise or even to listen to anything that Greer or the Mets plan committee had said is where we're at now. So, you know, we're 95% done. In HPAC's opinion, they're 100% done. So it's going to have to be Somebody's going to have to decide how we get this and come to an agreement, or you know, do we really need the historic preservation element in there? That that would be 
my my comment. If we can't that's, agree, that's that's the heart of your whole discussion, Tom. Do we really need the element? If, if I mean, if that's going to take up, if you're taking, you know, saying a hundred hours to get it together, just going back and forth, then I would say if it's not a required element, you know, forget it. Uh, I think but, but a, as a personal as a personal opinion, I think to tell the history of this town gives a very good background for where we've come from and the people that are here and why we are preserving what we have and the vision that people have going forward is they want it to remain the way it is. And you have to tell that story through the historical element, historical preservation element. If I can add, if I can add something, um, during this whole process of looking at the, at the historic element, there's fundamentally a, 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 a complete disagreement between the historical society and and uh, and HPAC, <clears throat> and and it's it was it was the decision of the master plan committee that we wanted to go with the larger, more complete document, mm -hmm. and that then becomes a. The only issue remaining, and, and I agree with David, it's probably more than 95% time. The issue is the planning board as a whole needs to make a decision on which way we go. Do we go with a three-page document that doesn't meet the requirements of the, of the element as, as, uh, as guidance was given by Greer, or do we go with what we felt was appropriate, which was the more complete document? It's a board decision. It's a political decision that has to be made. It's not, a, it, it's not for the lack of fact, factual information. It's not for the lack of effort by, by topology. It's purely between different groups in this town and, and, and how they, you know, how they view the historical importance. Yeah, I think we're kind of <laughs> our decision and our decision was we wanted to go with the more complete document. So it, 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 it's, it's ready if the planning board makes a decision to go with the full document as opposed to a going... three page one. I That's think we've gone off track here. We're now talking about a document, and it's we're kind of. It seems almost like we're wandering into. Uh, this is part a of year, a, This is a part of a process problem that 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 causes these kind of delays. We yeah. kick this around for weeks and weeks and weeks, and 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 every meeting where we where we kicked it around, it just it just ran you know topology out from doing something else. So we're responsible for the delays. Alan, I understand that, and uh, I understand Brennan's comment about focusing on one little problem, but I'm, I'm, I'm here because I'm at Historic Preservation because it is an example of the potential for, first of all, getting competent professional advice from the consultant that we've hired, and secondly, getting it packaged in a way that the planning board, by at least a majority, can approve and adopt it. I think we're ready to go now. No, I, I, let's just let's let's just let's just get the conversation back on track, right? It, it's we've we've gone we've gone way off uh, 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 track and I think we're we're talk, we're now bringing in committees and blaming people for delays and all the rest of it. It should never ever have gone have gone in that direction. And 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 I'm 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 just I can't believe that we that, that, that here we are pointing the finger at other uh, committees and groups within this town whenever we as a planning board were absolutely responsible for this document and everything else. So let's bring it right back on track. First of all, now I'm, uh, I really don't know, but I'm, I'm confused as to what the proposal is because naively I want a, a, a completed master plan. That's all I want. It's just pretty simple. Mm -hmm. So, um, the proposal that was made, I thought, would be that we would deliver it. That's what that's what would be delivered—a completed master plan. There'd be a nice bow tied around it, and it would be it, it would be handed to us, and it would be for a fixed sum. And I'm actually wondering whether that fixed sum is is doable, right? Because because you've had experience of the town now for over a year. It seems that. In the course of this year, you knew things were going wrong, right? and I'm saying topology, different members, things were going, things were not happening, and it was like, 
your head was buried in the sand, a big, and, and, and it was simply feeding back to, uh, and, and, and it was topology, and maybe it was a master plan committee. I don't know who, who, who it was, but we were getting the feedback that it's okay, it's on track, it's going to be done, it's going to be done, it's going to be done. You knew it wasn't going to be done. And yet nobody, certainly on the professional side, came to anyone within the, here in the planning board and said, there's a problem. You have to, something has to happen here. It's a, it's, a, it's a board document. Somebody, the board has to intervene because the system's not working. It's not the people. The people are, 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 who, are, who are involved are, are, are doing their very best, but we've seen this happen in other, we're, we see this happen in other municipalities. We need to do something about it. That didn't happen. It was just allowed to, 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 to from, from what I'm hearing right now, spiral. And now here we are being asked to, hey, believe us, we'll get it taken care of. But it, there's, there's, there'll be no concrete examples given, uh, I've heard anyway, as to, how it's actually, how, as to how you're actually going to make this happen after a year of, of, of uh, uh, what you've seen so far and very little happening, how you're going to make it happen as, 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 as a professional. And that seems to me the, the, that should have been the, the uh, crux of the presentation tonight. And then the, the cost of the end of the, of, 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 the, of the work product, the master plan, the completed master plan should have been engaged on that appropriately along with the time frame. The time frame, it, the last thing I'm going to say here is three months by July 4th. Have you looked at the, at, the, at, 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 at the schedule of this board, our agendas and what we're doing? We don't have the time to meet and do all of this. And by, by, by the time uh, the, uh, to have the, uh, the, uh, uh, the various hearings that we need to in order to finish this by, by July 4th. And so it, it, I, I'm, 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 I'm struggling with, 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 with what's happened in the past and then how you're, uh, how you're, how you're going to come, come, come uh, uh, due with all the, 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 the various promises that have been made tonight for the future. Yeah. And, and, and again, the last thing, this is the last thing, we get down to, on, on this board, pointing the finger at other people, it's, it's disgraceful. We shouldn't be doing that at, at other groups. This is ours. And, 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 and any, any problems, the buck stops with us, not, not pointing the finger at other people, uh, and, and especially Zoom. Zoom's actually been a very, uh, a very good format here. Uh, and and we've, we've managed to get a lot of things done in this town using Zoom, just as in many other towns. I don't take that as an excuse. So, so let's maybe bring it back on track and, and, and start answering the questions I've just posed because I'm, I came in here thinking one thing and now I'm a complete loss. Yeah, I'd like to dovetail off uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, any finger pointing, we should look at the three that are coming right back at the, at who's doing the pointing, we own it. Um, I remember uh, Mr. Kuzenberg sitting in front of you asking you about a plan and how we were gonna get there and how confident you were in delivering that plan. I, and I remember saying, what is your escalation? I need an escalation. If you see it coming off the rails, you need to escalate. So I think we all own a piece in this. It is our document. We need to deliver it. I want to know for sure. And I know Mr. Abramson has given his professional etiquette and state and taking ownership of it. But I, I, I want, I, there's two pieces that still need to be delivered. And I believe the land use is one of the four pillars that are a must in the plan. And then the, the other is a, a DIY for uh, uh, using someone else's terminology. So how are we going to be ensured that that master plan, the land use element, which is the biggest piece is going to get delivered on time in the three months on track, on budget. And here we are special meeting Thursday and we don't meet generally on Thursday, but here we are. And that's, and, and to Mayor Ray or Deputy Mayor Ray's point, we have a full agenda right into June, right into July 4th. Um, so uh, I guess not to answer a question with a question, uh, Mr. Jones, uh, regarding the land use element, I'm confident that, you know, from a technical standpoint, we have the know-how to do it um, clearly that we, you know, we can work with you, I guess. Uh, so 
one of the questions back to you would be, how does this, we had a master plan working committee, it appears to maybe that didn't work out, right? Um, so how would this board propose um, to give us input um, on documents? You know, would we meet like this as a full board in real time? Um, I'm sensitive to what you and uh, Deputy Mayor Ray have said around, uh, you know, full agendas and workload and things like that. So um, if, if you tell me um, what access we will have uh, to the board to, you know, get input to, to refine this document, whether it's all or some of you, um, I could, I'd be able to answer that question more effectively. Fair enough. And, and none of us on the board here are being paid. So we do this out of the kindness of our heart. Um, I think, Mr. Chairman, uh, we will do, definitely need to have somebody, somebody, when I say body, a group of people engaged with topology or whomever, if we decide to go forward with topology to help drive this to the finish line. We well, cannot, that, we that's, that's obviously true. And uh, we need to make that decision after we decide as a board what the master plan has to look like. Uh, you know, at, at its very simplest, is it a cosmetic editorial work that we're lacking, or is it substance that the board members have the knowledge to fill in, or is it professional advice about such things as how to define permitted uses in each zone? Uh, what is an appropriate ratio? Is five per acre appropriate for uh, the mixed use downtown business zones. Oh. Uh, those are those we need. We have we as a board have not established at what level we need the professional services. So it, it's it's nine o'clock. Um, I don't know if anyone has any more direct questions for topology. Um, I think we can go back and forth continuously for the next 30 minutes to an hour, but I don't know what that's going to achieve at this point. But unless someone has direct questions, I would say, Mr. Chair, I would make a motion that we, we break, um, think about any last minute questions, come back, and then have one final opportunity to talk to topology and then move into executive session. Mr. Chairman, Philip, I just you, one... Philip had his hand up, but like, let's hear from him. Go ahead. No, I just, I, I, um, I should have let Mr. Jones finish, uh, but I thought that um, his motion was going to be to move into executive now. And I just was going to request um, at such a time that you do, uh, you know, as kind of our colloquy, Mr. Sandow, we were going back and forth about like, what is the scope of this plan and what are the expectations of this plan? And should it include, you know, which elements um, should it include? And, you know, clearly we were under certain um, impressions about the utility element, the circulation element, that these things were not um, you know, being expected of us. So I wanna make sure that we all know one of the most important things here is that we understand what the finish line is um, and we have a mutual understanding of what that finish line is. So that would be the only other request I have for you is um, you know, whatever you do ultimately decide if we're involved in it, um, that we um, just have enough, that, that you all kind of conclude amongst yourselves What's the, the, the full package? That's What's the maximum number of professional hours that we're going to buy for a fixed fee of $9,000? That is typically not how I, um, how we would look at it. And I would look at it like I need to know what my scope of work is and I will uh, come up, we'll come up with a budget internally for that. Yes, but you've been, you've been in this process now for over a year and you yet you come to us with a number tonight of seven to nine thousand dollars and call it fixed fee. Certainly, you must have had some expectation uh, going into tonight's meeting as to what that would cost you and what it would buy us. And I just like to hear how you arrived at that number and what's the maximum number of hours based on all you have learned over the past year. You, in other so, words, in other words, you put a number on the table. What are you selling? Right. Um, so Will can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that it was to complete the land use element, to complete historic preservation, to go through all the remaining hearings, uh, whatever presentations need to be prepared in order to facilitate those presentations, 
um, that there were some additional mapping requests that involved some environmental mapping um, that we would be preparing that. And, um, you know, and that's basically it. I think that the estimate, uh, which was an internal estimate that, that is much more my problem than it is yours, uh, I think is around 46 hours or whatever that number was, Will. And again, correct me if, correct me if I'm wrong here. And that, that if, there was an, if there was an exceedance of those hours, um, then we would, uh, uh, I would eat those. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, my effective rate goes down for every hour uh, that I go above uh, my estimates, but that's my problem more than it is yours. So, so if I do quick math here, uh, 46 hours over for $9,000, it's 195 an hour. Uh, that was at the, the high end when we weren't, I don't. If I do it at one, I don't know what exactly. An hour, it's 60 yeah. hours. 6,900. At one, one at, at, at um, 150 an hour for $9,000, it comes out to 60 hours. That's quick, dirty math. Right, I just, I did 46 times 150, um, which would be that fixed rate. Uh, is sixty nine hundred dollars, so that's that. That's where that seven seven thousand dollar. And and again, this was not a formal okay. proposal. It was a it was a round number in a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. um, your high number was nine thousand. That's right. So that would be your one ninety five at forty six. Right, what, and it it didn't have to do with increasing the rate. It had to do with um, increasing the scope. Okay. And and yet at this point you have some perception of what the scope of the remaining work is. And my question is, does that produce a fully qualified, effective and efficient and realistic master plan for the township of Long Hill? Well, Mr. S uh, Chairman, I like after listening to you, I'm not sure that I do have a, a, a clear understanding of what's expected. So I think that I need that first before I can answer your second question. Fair enough, fair enough. Do you have any other remarks before we uh, uh, adjourn to uh, either take a break or go into executive session, depending on the member's choice? I don't. I, I do appreciate, again, um, the opportunity to be here. Um, and I do, uh, for what it's worth, um, you know, I do apologize that we have to be having this conversation um, and that I'll make sure it's the last conversation of this nature if I have anything to do with it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Would the members like to take a five minute break while we uh, and and return to executive session? Yes, sir. Uh, we'll need to um, Deborah will need to clear the audience and we'll need a resolution. Yeah, I have a resolution prepared. And uh, why don't we come back from break, Mr. Chairman, and we need to are we adjourning the regular meeting of the special meeting or are we going to come back Yolanta, and we we'll have to adjourn it after? No, you have to adjourn afterward. Okay. So what, let's come back from break, Mr. Chairman. And if you'd like, I'd read the resolution. Otherwise we can go. Uh, upon uh, let's take a five minute break and uh, come back afterward and do the executive session resolution. Okay. Thank you. We're gonna, um, I, I guess, not be here for that, obviously. Um, there's probably no reason for you to stay, but certainly we will be in touch. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Bob. Thank Have a good night. Well, thanks, Phil. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Teen. And you have a resolution to read, Deborah? I do. Township of Long Hill Planning Board Executive Session Resolution, whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231P-L 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances and whereas the planning board is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the planning board of the Township of Long Hill, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, as follows. Number one, the public shall be excluded from the discussion of the specific subject matter. Number two, the general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is contract negotiations for continued work on the master plan. Number three, it is anticipated that the minutes of the subject matter of the executive session will be made public upon conclusion of the matter under discussion, and in any event where appropriate pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4-7 and 4-13. Number four, the planning board will come back into special session and may take further action. Number five, 
The resolution shall take effect immediately. So now we need a motion and a second and a roll call vote. So moved. Vote. Second. Okay. Hold on a minute. So that was Mr. File and Deputy Mayor, correct? Yep. Mr. File. Yes. Deputy Mayor Ray. Yes. Mr. Hands. Yes. Mr. Malinowski. Yes. Mr. Richardson. Yes. Vice Chairman Jones. And Cat. <laughs> and Cat. Yes, I was trying to get off a of mute. <laughs> and Chairman Sandow. Yes. Motion carries. So All we right, will now enter. We will now enter executive session at 9.16 p.m. I'm going to, gentlemen, before we start, I'm going to pause, stop the recording. In session for the regular meeting at 10.28. Uh, you have to start the video again? I no, did. No, we don't need I, to do that. I well, did, anyway. But, but Dennis, we have two minutes left. We should, we should use them. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'll only have to trim it off later. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. No move. <laughs> All in favor of adjourning. Aye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Thank you, folks. Good night, Good night everyone. Night. Night, everyone. Thanks. Thanks.